Hello, and welcome to Game Theory. I'm Professor Naomi Utkoff of the United States Naval Academy, and in this video, we'll find mixed strategy Nash equilibria in matching pennies and rock, paper, scissors. In the two previous videos, we established that there are some games whose Nash equilibria are not apparent after underlining and are not solvable by iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies. We therefore expanded our idea of strategies to include mixed strategies in an effort to make Nash Equilibrium a sensible solution concept in matching pennies, rock, paper, scissors, and other games. In this video, we learn how to find mixed strategy Nash Equilibrium and do so in matching pennies and rock, paper, scissors. We'll demonstrate the method with matching pennies. In the left column, we have the matching pennies matrix, and we write each player's strategy as a probability distribution over the pure strategy space, heads, tails. For now, we'll use P and Q as placeholders for the probability of players 1 and 2 respectively playing heads. To specify a value for P is to specify player 1's strategy. To specify a value for Q is to specify player 2's strategy. In mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, player 2 selects a Q such that player 1 is indifferent between heads and tails, and player 1 selects a P such that player 2 is indifferent between heads and tails. If a player is not indifferent, say, player 1 strictly prefers heads to tails, player 1's best response is now heads, rather than her mixed strategy. The only way for mixed strategies to form a Nash equilibrium is for players to be indifferent across their pure strategies. We'll find appropriate numerical values for P and Q by the four steps listed below the player's strategies. We'll highlight our current step in blue. Player 1 is indifferent between heads and tails when her expected payoff of playing heads is equal to her expected payoff of playing tails. Therefore, our first step is to compute those expectations. Let's introduce some notation. EU1 of H denotes player 1's expected utility when player 1 plays heads. The first argument of U1 denotes player 1's action, and the second argument of U1 denotes player 2's action. For example, U1 of HT denotes player 1's payoff when player 1 plays heads and player 2 plays tails. When player 1 plays heads, the possible outcomes of the game are heads heads, which occurs when player 2 plays heads, and heads tails, which occurs when player 2 plays tails. The probability of heads heads is equal to the probability of player 2 playing heads, since we have, for the moment, restricted attention to player 1 playing heads. Similarly, the probability of heads tails is equal to the probability of player 2 playing tails. The probability that player 2 plays heads is Q, and when that outcome occurs, player 1 receives 1. The probability that player 2 plays tails is 1 minus Q, and when that outcome occurs, player 1 receives minus 1. Player 1's expected payoff when playing heads is 2Q minus 1. When player 1 plays tails, the possible outcomes are tails heads, which occurs when player 2 plays heads, and tails tails, which occurs when player 2 plays tails. The probability of tails heads is equal to the probability of player 2 playing heads, since we have, for the moment, restricted attention to player 1 playing tails. Similarly, the probability of tails tails is equal to the probability of player 2 playing tails. The probability that player 2 plays heads is Q, and when that outcome occurs, player 1 receives minus 1. The probability that player 2 plays tails is 1 minus Q, and when that outcome occurs, player 1 receives 1. Player 1's expected payoff when playing heads is 1 minus 2Q. When we complete a step, we'll move the results of the step to the top of the right-hand column and continue below. Player 1 is indifferent between heads and tails when her expected payoff from heads is equal to her expected payoff from tails. Using the expressions we found in step 1, we obtain 2q minus 1 is equal to 1 minus 2q. q is equal to 1 half. Steps 3 and 4 are a repeat of steps 1 and 2, this time computing player 2's expectations and solving for p. We could appeal to symmetry, and if you want to cut to the chase, go right ahead. Just know that if our game lacked this nice symmetry, we'd have to do all four steps, so we'll practice doing all four steps right now. EU2 of H denotes player 2's expected utility when player 2 plays H. The first argument of U2 denotes player 1's action, and the second argument of U2 denotes player 2's action. For example, 
U2 of HT denotes player 2's payoff when player 1 plays heads and player 2 plays tails. When player 2 plays heads, the possible outcomes are heads heads, which occurs when player 1 plays heads, and tails heads, which occurs when player 1 plays tails. The probability of heads heads is equal to the probability of player 1 playing heads, since we have, for the moment, restricted attention to player 2 playing heads. Similarly, the probability of tails heads is equal to the probability of player 1 playing tails. The probability that player 1 plays heads is p, and when that outcome occurs, player 2 receives minus 1. The probability that player 1 plays tails is 1 minus p, and when that outcome occurs, player 2 receives 1. Player 2's expected payoff when playing heads is 1 minus 2p. When player 2 plays tails, the possible outcomes are heads tails, which occurs when player 1 plays heads, and tails tails, which occurs when player 1 plays tails. The probability of heads tails is equal to the probability of player 1 playing heads, since we have, for the moment, restricted attention to player 2 playing tails. Similarly, the probability of tails tails is equal to the probability of player 1 playing tails. The probability that player 1 plays heads is p, and when that outcome occurs, player 2 receives 1. The probability that player 1 plays tails is 1 minus p, and when that outcome occurs, player 2 receives minus 1. Player 2's expected payoff when playing t is 2p minus 1. Now solve for p. Player 2 is indifferent between heads and tails when her expected payoff from heads is equal to her expected payoff from tails. Using the expressions we found in step 3, we obtain 1 minus p is equal to 2p minus 1. p is equal to 1 half. We can write the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium formally as shown at the bottom of the right-hand column, or a shorter version could specify that p is equal to q is equal to 1 half. Now that we've seen the method for finding mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, we'll apply it to rock, paper, scissors. On the left side, we have the rock, paper, scissors matrix, and we write each player's strategy as a probability distribution over the pure strategy space, rock, paper, scissors. For now, we'll use P, Q, R, and S as placeholders in the player's respective strategies. In mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, player two selects an R and S such that player one is indifferent among rock, paper, and scissors, and player 1 selects a p and q such that player 2 is indifferent among rock, paper, and scissors. If a player is not indifferent, say player 1 strictly prefers rock to paper and rock to scissors, player 1's best response is now rock, rather than her mixed strategy. As in matching pennies, the only way for mixed strategies to form a Nash equilibrium is for both players to be indifferent among their pure strategies. Let's take a moment to introduce a notational norm that we omitted in our matching pennies example so that we could focus on finding our Nash equilibrium. We will pick one of the pure strategies, in this case scissors, and not specify the weight it receives in the mixed strategy. If we specify the probability of playing rock as p and the probability of playing paper as q, it is implicit that the probability of scissors is 1 minus p minus q, so we don't lose any information by omitting it. I've grayed out the lines specifying the weight given to scissors and henceforth won't include them, like so. Now that we've neatened up our mixed strategies a bit, we will find appropriate numerical values for P, Q, R, and S by the three steps listed below the player's strategies. We'll highlight our current step in blue. This time, we will appeal to symmetry. Players 1 and 2 must play the same strategy in mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. In the left-hand column, replace R and S in player 2 strategy with P and Q, respectively. All set. Player 1 is indifferent among rock, paper, and scissors when her expected payoff from each is the same. Therefore, our first step is to compute those expected payoffs. Let's introduce our notation. EU1 of rock denotes player 1's expected utility when player 1 plays rock. The first argument of U1 denotes player 1's action, and the second argument of U1 denotes player 2's action. For example, U1 of rock, scissors, denotes player 1's payoff when player 1 plays rock, 
and player two plays scissors. When player one plays rock, the possible outcomes are rock rock, which occurs when player two plays rock, rock paper, which occurs when player two plays paper, and rock scissors, which occurs when player two plays scissors. Since for the moment we have restricted attention to player one playing rock, the probability of rock rock is equal to the probability of player two playing rock, the probability of rock paper is equal to the probability of player two playing paper, and the probability of rock scissors is equal to the probability of player two playing scissors. The probability that player two plays rock is p, and when that outcome occurs, player one receives zero. The probability that player two plays paper is q, and when that outcome occurs, player one receives minus one. The probability that player two plays scissors is one minus p minus q, and when that outcome occurs, player one receives one. EU one of rock equals one minus p minus two q. This expectation depends on p and q. At the end of step two, we will have three expectations, which will give us two equations and two unknowns. So we will have enough information to solve for P and Q. We'll repeat this task to compute EU1 of paper. The probability that player two plays rock is P, and when that outcome occurs, player one receives one. The probability that player two plays paper is Q, and when that outcome occurs, player one receives zero. The probability that player two plays scissors is one minus P minus Q, and when that outcome occurs, player one receives minus one. EU one of paper equals minus one plus two P plus Q. Last but not least, we'll compute EU one of scissors. The probability that player two plays rock is P, and when that outcome occurs, player one receives minus one. The probability that player two plays paper is Q, and when that outcome occurs, player one receives one. The probability that player two plays scissors is one minus P minus Q, and when that outcome occurs, player one receives zero. EU one of scissors equals minus P plus Q. Here are all of the expectations together. Indifference across pure strategies requires that all three expectations from step two be equal. We can express this requirement as the two equalities that appear here. Using the expressions we found in step two, we obtain one minus P minus two Q is equal to minus one plus two P plus Q, and one minus two Q is equal to minus P plus Q. Some algebra later, we obtain P is equal to Q is equal to one third. The Nash equilibrium of rock, paper, scissors is that player one plays each of her peer strategies equally often. Player two plays each of her peer strategies equally often. Neither player can predict what the other will do. Thanks so much for watching this video in which we found mixed strategy Nash equilibrium and matching pennies. In the next video, we'll find best response functions in matching pennies, and we'll see that the Nash equilibrium we found in this video is indeed the intersection of those best response functions.